So I know that we've talked about skill in Yu-Gi-Oh before and like what constitutes skill, but man, we need to talk about this again because people are still saying that purely in Super Heavy Samurai and all this stuff is brain dead. And I think people are missing the mark on what really is skill in Yu-Gi-Oh. So let's dive on into this hopefully for the last time, shall we? Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it is your host with a beautiful background most, Avery LR32 here, and destroy the ever-living boo-boo stain off of that like and subscribe button so we can climb even further beyond the 1100 ladder. We're getting close to 1200, ladies and gentlemen. Maybe I'll shave my head at 1200 or I'll shave my chest. I don't know. Maybe the Ultra Ball will get me a girlfriend. Hopefully, it can actually catch something. <laughs> so, anyways, hope you're all having a fantastic day. I want to talk about skill in Yu-Gi-Oh! and skill, especially going into this next format after we get a new balance, since I'm sure that a new balance is right around the corner. We'll probably get it after the YCS in Chile if I had to uh, guess. But a lot of people, mostly like online on EDO Pro, and I've seen a little bit on Reddit and in YouTube comments here and there, I've been playing purely like crazy. As you know, this is like the new meta deck now that I'm done with Cash Tier that I'm going to be playing. And so many people are getting pissed off on EDO Pro saying, oh, you're just a meta sheep. Uh, you're, you're just playing a skillless deck. It's so brain dead. It's smooth brain, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, the hell are you talking about like this deck operates i would say very similarly to sky striker in the sense of every opening hand you have is gonna be a different damn story like it's not gonna be the same lines of play every time unless you just get a hand that you're familiar with and that's just semantics at that point but you can't always guarantee that you're going to end on like the same end board that's going to get you the W. You know, maybe you have to kind of play a bit differently if you get hand trapped or something and you end on like a purely leap with like a plump. You attach a couple materials in the draw phase, then you use leap to get to a noir. Like as long as you get to the noir, that's all that matters at the end of the sugar coated rainbow, Boo Bear. <laughs> but what pisses me off is these people who every time a new meta deck comes out they start bitching and complaining and they're like you're just a meta sheep it doesn't take any skill when it's like these these people won't ever pick up the deck and just play it to see how it fucking functions and it makes me laugh because it's just like no matter what meta deck comes out you're going to bitch all the same and i don't understand why like i understand that skill in Yu-Gi-Oh is very subjective and there's a clip this is actually <laughs> So this is from 11 years ago, believe it or not. And I remember I used to be subbed to this guy. He used, he used to post videos a lot. Uh, and then he made a different YouTube channel because he got locked out of this one. Anyway, besides the point, shout out to the Gadget Guru. If y'all know who that Yugi tuber is, you are a dinosaur like your boy. I want to take a clip from his video where he's ranting about skill in Yu-Gi-Oh! Because I feel like he makes very good points. Even though that this was from 11 years ago, back when Six Samurai and X-Sabers were the best decks in the format. It's the fact that this still holds up to this day. So I'm going to play the clip. I apologize in advance for the audio. I did what I could in editing. Uh, we'll play it and then we'll discuss. But you have to have skill to beat one another. It's just how it is. That's that's a lot, a lot of the time. That's how matches are decided. Whoever has more skill wins because they conserve their cards. They play better in certain situations. They, they you know, skill factors in a shit ton in games. Whether you get a good hand, a medium hand, a bad hand, a horrible hand, a god hand, skill factors in. You can have someone get a god hand, like, they, on their chart, they could be like, bleh, over here. And you can have someone get a hand over here. And if they have enough, if there's enough skill difference between the two players, they can actually go head to head. I've actually seen it happen. So from that clip, hopefully you understand better now the point that I'm trying to make. And that's that skill in Yu-Gi-Oh! is so subjective, and I don't understand why people think that just all the meta decks don't take skill. We've talked about before on the channel where if you're playing something like, let's say, Cash Tira, it takes skill at first to learn the lines of play and to learn the combos, but then where it becomes brain dead is like if you just cut your brain off and you know exactly what you're going to do, you're going to do the five zone lock, whatever, like there's not really any skill in that. Like if you know you're just going to go for that combo, like, okay, whatever. But there's skill, there is still skill in the sense of you have to learn the deck, and there's skill in the fact of you have to decide, am I going to go for the Arise Heart play with the three materials, or am I just going to drop a Dookie on the board and just lock out as many zones and I, as I can and hope to God that they don't have board breakers, hand traps, Nibiru, what the fuck ever. Because if they have that, you're going to probably lose the ball game. Whereas you may just end on the Arise Heart and kind of just lock them out, you know, for the first few turns and then try and swing for game. Cash Tira has gotten to the point now near the end of this format where majority of the time in game one, players will either go for just the Arise Heart 
and sit on that or they'll go for like the full zone lock then games two and three if they see nib or something they'll kind of pull back or alternatively games two and or three they go for the zone lock because they just don't care at that point there's a lot of skill and mind games even in a sense that goes into that you know maybe you bluff the nibiru on that fifth summon you start thinking like oh i might have a response to that summon and then you don't actually have the nib. It's the same way with using skill in Yu-Gi-Oh! Where if, like, let's say, for example, you're going against Labyrinth. A strategy that a lot of people, myself included, use against the Labyrinth deck is that we'll just bait out the evenly match. Like, we'll just bullshit as if we got it. So, like, if the Labyrinth player goes first and they drop out their the Lady Castle, whatever the hell, they put down five back row, they pass turn. I'll, I might even go, like, if I don't have a really an out to the board, I'll go draw. Standby. Main phase. Attempt to end main phase, enter battle phase with no cards on my field. So now they're like, oh shit, he's got evenly matched. So now they have to start shotgunning all of the trap cards that they want to play, like their welcome labyrinth, big welcome, all that stuff. And then I go, okay, battle phase, sure. End of battle phase. Yeah, okay, main phase two. And they're like, oh, son of a bitch. He never had the evenly match. And it's so good at shotgunning trap cards. That's less cards that you have to worry about. It's not always about just the game is brain dead. Like, I understand, like, if people that are playing a rogue deck or something, or they just want to play casually, they don't want to deal with meta decks. They think it's just brain dead. They think it's all the same of just doing 50,000 combos. And Yu-Gi-Oh! has been a 50,000 combo meta deck game for a while. Like, I'm not going to sugarcoat that. Purely is different, though, in the sense of it, and, and that's what I don't get about it, is, like, it operates so differently compared to all of the other meta decks like super heavy samurai is flashy as shit right like you're putting out barons apollosas whatever like you're doing extra deck stuff whereas with purely yeah it's like an extra deck based deck because what deck isn't and it is exceeds based but i mean it's not flashy like you're gonna end on like maybe a plump with like five or six materials if you're lucky get a couple draws off the sleepy memory and then make the noir in the standby and draw some more cards like that's good don't get me wrong but it's not like really flashy it's not combo heavy it's just about knowing which purely's you need to play and win to make sure that you're baiting out the right hand traps like literally for me at this point purely has literally when i go first is just how many hand traps can i bait out on this first turn so that my opponent has less resources going into the next turn that's why like especially if i open up a purely lily i'll activate a purely quick play in the draw phase ditch a card summon out the original purely not lily because if lily gets hand trapped i'm losing the ball game i would rather them ash or imperm valor whatever my purely since that's a soft once per turn then go for the lily once i feel like i'm as insulated as i can be whether that's having straight purely street up to protect from targeting if i special summon the lily uh, the point that i'm making is all of these thoughts are rolling through my mind as I'm playing this deck that I have learned from playtesting, watching combo videos, watching videos on the deck, watching rulings, watching all of these things so that I can learn how the deck functions. And yes, I know that there's that casual crowd out there who's like, I don't want to do all that shit. I want to be able to play my, I don't know, Dark Magician Beaver Warrior shit dot deck and like not get my shit pushed in, which like, sorry, like that, that, that's how Yu-Gi-Oh is. And I understand from being a competitive player, not everybody wants to be competitive. Whenever there's downtime in the Yu-Gi-Oh! format, I'll bust out a casual deck. I'll play the Egyptian Gods, Dark Magician, whatever the hell. But as a competitive player, and even as, like, if I'm playing casually, I always strive to get better. Why would you ever think that a deck is brain dead when you haven't actually picked it up yourself? There was a guy that I used to be friends with on YouTube years ago, and I'll, I'll leave you with this, where... He said, and I quote, I don't, I am not going to play a meta deck just to learn how it works when I can learn how it works just by playing against it. And he was a bad player. Like he genuinely was garbage. And like, I don't mean to say that to be mean, although partially I do because turned out he was talking shit behind my back. But anyway, that was years ago. I, I don't care. It's just like, it is what it is. But the point that I'm making besides all that is that he was denying himself the ability to learn how a deck functions and learn the choke points in the deck to know how it functions. Instead, he's going based off of playing against the deck and seeing how the opponent plays, thinking that that's how he could learn the choke points of the deck. If you want to learn a deck inside and out, whether you plan on playing it or beating it, you need to pick it up, you need to play it, you need to learn the mindset of what it is that the, let's say, for example, the purely player, the super heavy samurai player is thinking so that you can better understand how to break up their plays. You know, are you going to droll and lockbird a purely player after they've already searched two times? Or are you going to do it on their first search? And 
are you going to be able to identify that they're an idiot if they don't activate their quick play spells in the draw phase? Or if they are smart, if they don't do that in the draw phase, then you can think, okay, they don't have a quick play that they can play without having something established on the board. Because think about it, and purely the only quick plays that they can activate in the draw phase with nothing established on board is sleepy memory and pretty memory. And then if they play like a quick play in that draw phase, and if they have something like happy memory, then they could target that other quick play so that they could get another one off. But like, that's kind of semantics at that point. These are things that when you test other decks in the format, instead of just sticking with your one deck, that you are able to learn and you're able to get fucking better because of it. I don't understand why people just think all meta decks don't take any skill because that's just not true. Why would you make yourself look ignorant when instead you should be doing everything that you can to be a better player at the game, whether it's casually or wanting to be competitive and get to that next level. It's all about improving and being the best person you can be. And that goes for life in general. For Yu-Gi-Oh! Life, work life, it's about being the best person you can be and you can do that by playing other decks instead of just saying that they're brain dead. Yeah, if you know the combo's off the back of your hand and it's like a one-trick pony, yeah, it's brain dead. Like, whatever. Good for you, Sugar Boo Bear. You pulled off a brain dead combo. But when you get into those grind games, that's where the skill really comes in. So guys, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Don't get me wrong. If you're casual, I got nothing against you. Just the point I'm making is about you should always be improving instead of just saying, oh, a deck's brain dead. I, it's it's garbage. Like, you're, you're just a meta sheep. I like, I like, again, on EDO Pro, uh, the Sky Striker dude who whose ass I whooped the other day, he tried to tell me, oh, purely he's brain dead because you should go make exceed, make exceed, make exceed, and then, you know, draw a bunch of cards. It's not always that pimp. It's about insulating yourself from hand traps. So, guys, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully that dog shuts the fuck up, and I will see you in the next video.